Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and it is mailbag time. Use hashtag Raiders for Super Chat. Get those questions, those comments on the show. Friendly reminder that this video was recorded on Tuesday, and there might be a lot of things that happen. There might be nothing that happens. I just want you to know from the jump. Let's go to the first question here. It's from Christopher Leonard. Mitch, Mitch, with joint practices with the Cheatriots and Raiders, does McDaniels ask about an Aguilar trade and what it would take? So the Raiders and Cheatriots, it's kind of difficult to say, their joint practice, I believe, is on August 23rd, or at least that's when it starts, which not too much of a surprise because McDaniels obviously was there. The Raiders' final preseason game is up against New England. Do they ask about an Aguilar trade? Potentially, but if Aguilar is dealt, I actually think it happens a lot sooner than that date. And if you were to ask me how much would it cost, I'd say right now I would offer Cleveland Furrow for uh, Nelson Aguilar straight up or a fifth-round pick for Aguilar because the Raiders have to take on almost $10 million of Aguilar's contract. It's a lot of money, which I don't mind because he's been a really good fit, but this also could be very interesting, especially if Demarcus Robinson uh, fails a little bit this offseason. What up, Bremmy? How likely will Demarcus Robinson be signed? Well, Demarcus Robinson is already on the team I don't know if you're saying, like, make the 53-man roster or get cut. I think he ends up making the team, but I don't really think he's going to be the wide receiver three as confident as what a lot of other people think. $50 super chat coming in from the GOAT, Patrick B. With everyone talking about our defense and offense, can our special teams get some scores for us this year? How is the special teams unit looking? Well... I will say the Raiders have made some key additions on special teams. And $50 Super Chat, I'm taking a fireball shot for that one, Patrick. Oh, man. In terms of special teams, though, Kenny Young's a good special teams player. Or, he was in the past. Uh, Michael Kaiser has some ability, though. I don't know if he ends up making the team. Daniel Levitt's a good special teams player. Don't know if he makes the team. The one guy to really keep an eye on is Matt Collins because he's been like a Pro Bowl vote for special teams in years past. What scares me is the Raiders hired the old Bronco special teams coach because he has some connections with McDaniels from years past. He sucks. Oh, it's a, he's not a good special teams coach whatsoever. His name is escaping me. McMahon, that's who it is. The Raiders special teams coach McMahon, he did not come over and have a lot of shining, with a shining resume. Kind of reminds me of the Tom Cable resume. It was good one time, and now everyone thinks he's going to be good again. So I, I don't have a lot of hopes for the special teams. But hopefully I'm wrong. What up, Morris Clarkson? I saw Bucks coaches are mad at Fournette because he's like 260 pounds. What would be a trade the Raiders could do to send Kenyon Drake to Tampa Bay? I mean, I've kind of said this. Fifth round pick, I believe, is what Kenyon Drake's uh, trade value is concerning what his contract is. I don't know if you saw this quote out there, but apparently somebody said that Leonard Fournette is two donuts away from 260. He kind of reminds me of the whole Eddie Lacy story, feed, uh, feast mode, fat Eddie. He got signed to that three-year, $21 million deal. But you're right, Bucks coaches are not happy whatsoever. So let's just say this is the trade. The Buccaneers are like, man, we need a running back. Leonard, he just ate himself away, and we need someone that can run between the tackles and catch the football. And with the news that just came out about Drake being ready for week one, at least he's confident that he'll be ready for week one. Who wins this deal? Let me know. LV for the Raiders, TB for the Buccaneers. Let me know what you guys were thinking down in the comments. What up, Brandon? Mitch at the Motley Crew concert at Kauffman Stadium. Past Arrowhead gave the bird. FC, Raider Nation for life. Raiders! Sorry, guys. My voice has uh, been struggling lately, so the Raiders might not be as loud as what they usually are. Shout out to my guy, Graphic Raider, because I love – he sends me pictures of, like, him flipping off every single stadium when he drives by. If you guys do it too and you want to send me a pic of it, I'm, I'm totally down. Zell's Bow 69. Nice. What do you think about the new president? She seems intelligent. I mean, I look for a president who I believe is going to be able to do more the financial side, running the business side. And the fact that the Raiders right now have the most money generated from ticket sales at $119 million, yet have the 18th most tickets sold. Yes, it's because of the taxes and all that in Vegas, but I look for somebody to be able to run the organization side. They don't usually impact the football team too much. What up, Highlight King? Is Lester Cotton starting at guard still a possibility? 
I would say it's like a freckle of a just win baby at this current point. Did Cotton get some opportunities during OTAs in minicamp? Yes, he did. But he got those opportunities because Dylan Parham was working behind. They were just trying to get the guys loose. Also, Cotton is regarded as probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest, maybe only behind John Simpson. And when you're in pads or when you're not in pads, excuse me, sometimes you can really see like that strength. It's just, there's a lot of other players. I believe Jermaine Illuminor is ahead of him. Thayer Munford's ahead of him. Denzel Good's ahead of him. I really don't think Cotton makes the 53-man roster. He does have at least, though, a shot to make the practice squad. Now, if you guys want to subscribe to the Raiders Report, here's something cool. Scan the QR code with your phone camera. So get out your phone, get out your camera, scan this, click that link that pops up, and subscribe to the Raiders Report. Why should you do it? We're the number one most watched Raiders channel on YouTube. I promise you this is the time of the year that you need to be interactive with us because we're about to do watch parties. We're going to do a whole lot of giveaways during the season. And if that stuff interests you, then you need to subscribe. If you don't have, uh, if you're watching this on your phone, then just go to youtube.com slash Raiders report. Let's go to <clears throat> Impresario, who has more touchdowns, Waller or Adams. I'm going to go Adams. I, I just think... Waller in years past has been a red zone option because of how athletic he is. And, yes, D.C. has leaned on some tight ends in the past because of the lack of wide receiver talent he has. I love Darren Waller, but Devontae is the best receiver in the league, and the Raiders would be stupid to not target Adams in the red zone as much as possible. If Devontae doesn't finish the season with double-digit touchdowns, I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to say, shame on you, Josh McDaniels. Shame on you, uh, Bo Hart agrees, shame on you, Derek Carr, because something went wrong for that man not to get double-digit touchdowns. What up, Madman Raider? Now that Mullen, Nichols, and Hankins are on the pup list, do we sign free agents? I mean, I tweeted this out at Mitchell Rent 365 If the season were to start today and the Raiders didn't have Hankins and Nichols, you'd have the worst defensive tackle room in the entire NFL. So the fact that this team has $17.5 million in cap space, and there's free agents out there like Indomitian Sue, like Linval Joseph, like Sheldon Richardson, and nothing's being done. A little bit confused about it, if I'm being 100% honest with you. What up, Ty Davis? Rather have Phylon over Sue, did we sign a new receiver? Yes, we did sign a new receiver on Tuesday. His name is Isaiah Zuber. He did not play in 2021. He played in 2020 with New England Patriots. Two catches, 29 yards, two carries for 21 yards. And I appreciate that you guys like Darius Phylon, but personally, I think you're crazy to want Phylon over Sue. I get what Phylon was last season, but y'all, he literally tore his patella tendon as one of the worst injuries you can do to the top of your knee. And every team he's been on that hasn't had Gus Bradley hasn't really worked out all that well. I'm just saying. Shirley DeCastro, I think your caps locker on. Honestly, who plays more this season, Abram or Harmon? Thanks. Off the top of my head, I'm going to go Deron Harmon instead of Jonathan Abram because I just think Harmon is a clearly better player in this Patrick Graham system, also has those connections with the New England coaches in the past. But this show's about y'all, and I can type 30 all I want, and you guys might type Abram. Abram still might get more snaps. I still think no matter what, Harmon's going to be the more productive player because this defense really, you need your safeties <clears throat> to be able to also cover. Sure, Abram's going to get opportunities to play up in the box and potentially even line up as a linebacker here or there, but Deron Harmon, I'm hoping, is the answer because he's the better player, I, I promise you that. What up, Patrick B? Carr finally has a true wide receiver one and wide receiver two in tight end. I can't wait to see him light up Vegas this year. MVP push. I mean, this is the most talented team that DC's ever been around. And I know you look at that offense back in 2016 where he had Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper, like two very talented wide receivers. Let's not get it twisted. Good tight end room as well. But this offense is, this offense has the chance to be the best offense in the entire National Football League. Like, that's how good it is. And you're right. Adams, Renfro, Waller. And then whether you got to cover a running back out of the backfield, Foss, Moreau, Keelan, Cole, like really good options here. And I'm with you, man. I, I can't freaking wait for the season. I can't wait to be shouting, show me those TDs, first down Raiders, type JJ, all that stuff that Sam and I, Jeremy Juggs and I, we love to do. 
Believe me, dude. I'm, uh, I am 100% totally on board for you right there. Now, hey, y'all. Not only do I make videos here on YouTube, we also make videos over on Rumble. So if you could, give us a follow on Rumble. And a lot of times people are like, well, why would I follow you on Rumble if I already subscribe to the Raiders Report? Personally, I think the biggest catch and the biggest win is you can listen to the Raiders Report like a podcast, where if you're watching on YouTube and you minimize the screen, it goes away. On Rumble, you can minimize the screen, and it'll still play in the background. Plus, it's ad-free. My bosses, Chat Sports, they make me put ads in my video. Why? It's how we put a roof over our head. Rumble, there's no ads. So, if ad-free, listen to it like a podcast. Rumble.com slash Raiders Report. Uh, I promise you, it, it's a good platform, too. DMG1 Keek is... Uh, I can never... Bam, this is what I call him. A uh, UDFA option to make the roster Mitch. Yeah, I mean... You're going to see a lot of these UDFAs get a chance to shine. Now, personally, I think he ends up just making the practice squad. He's got a 7-foot, 3-inch wingspan, which would, if he would have been drafted, would have been the largest wingspan out of any player to come out this season or in the draft. He's got high upside. He just started playing football. Like I think he just started playing eight years ago, which some of you are like, wow, eight years ago is a long time. For a guy in the NFL to get his first reps playing football, in high school, I do think it's pretty surprising. He's from London. Seems like he's got some high upside. He got better and better every single year. He was at Utah, which is what I like to see. So, yes, he has a chance. And the fact that he's working with Carmen Brasillo, you can always be hopeful. It doesn't mean you're going to make the team, though. John Lord, what up, Mitch? I predict the rookie Butler is the steal of the draft. Am I wrong? So you're talking about Butler, the defensive tackle out of Tennessee also. We did just hit $100 in Super Chats. Every time we hit 100 bucks, taking a shot of Fireball, it's the way it goes here on the Raiders Report. Cheers to you, John Lord. Matthew Butler, I also agree with you, is going to be a good player. He might take a little extra time to really materialize in the NFL because when you look at his body, his body's not quite filled out yet like I would say a NFL defensive tackle player is. You can get better. He got better at Tennessee. I still think, though, Neil Farrell Jr. makes the bigger impact in year one as a run stopper. But I do think the higher upside actually goes to Matthew Butler. We got Polo. Oh, boy. Geringer? Geringer? So you think the line will be Miller, Simpson, James, Good, Leatherwood? No. I, I, if I was the team right now, I had to make an offensive line based off of what I know. I'd probably go Colt Miller, Dylan Parham, Andre James, Denzel Good, Alex Leatherwood. And my answer has already changed three or four times this offseason because you get new reports out there. The Silver and Black, they're going to go with the five best dudes. John, if John Simpson's in that top five, then hey, he deserves it. So what do you think? Because a lot of people are putting John Simpson as the starting left guard. And I get it. I get that he's been here before. I just, it's no disrespect to Simpson. I don't know how you can put him ahead of Dylan Parham. Now, maybe Parham looks bad in camp. He's trying to learn it. I just don't see that being the case. But you guys, let me know what y'all are thinking. Why for yes and for no will John Simpson start at left guard? Since we only have one mailbag today, I understand that I wasn't able to get everyone's questions. So if you have a question, you have a comment, you want to talk to me about a story, you're like, hey, man, this would be a cool story for you to cover on a future Raiders Report show, send me those DMs at Instagram on Twitter, at MitchellRent365. If there is a picture of you watching the Raiders Report, tag me in it on my IG story. I try to share all my IG stories. If you're watching the show with your friends, family, son, daughter, those are the coolest messages I can get. Share them on social media. It helps the show grow. Let's go to MM and L77, man, myth, and legend. When Leatherwood starts to play like a first-round player, I'm going to nickname him Beast from the X-Men. Spread the word, Big Mitch. You know, I haven't been called Big Mitch in a few uh, few years, but you know what? It's all good. I I'm hoping you're right. I don't know if Leatherwood's ever going to play like a first-round player because, well, I didn't have him graded as a first-round guy. I'm hoping he can play well. It's just it scares me because I don't view him as an offensive tackle. I view him as an offensive guard. But this is one of those situations where, oh, my Lord, I hope I am wrong because if Leatherwood can put it together and be a solid right tackle, this this entire team, this entire offense is just going to go straight like Dogecoin was supposed to do to the moon. Well, let's go to Raider 508. Clee, Abrams, Drake for Bates in a seventh. No. The Bengals 
pick up the phone, they laugh in your face, and they say, get the F out of here. I mean, Clee, Abrams, and Drake, Clee's contract alone would is actually more of a detrimental than a than an additive. I think if you wanted to trade away Cleveland Furl, Jonathan Abrams, and Kenyon Drake to the Bengals for Jesse Bates, I, I like I said, I don't even think even if you throw in a if you throw in a second round pick into this, I think they probably still say no. If I'm the Bengals, I want a first round pick for Jesse Bates, and I'm not going to listen to another offer because Abrams me is probably worth a fifth. Kenyon Drake's probably worth a fifth. Clee's probably worth a fifth or a sixth with his contract, so you're not going to trade away two fifths and a sixth to get Jesse Bates. It's just, it's it's not going to happen. Oh, top 10, maybe greatest name of all time on YouTube, My Vibe Raider. Congrats, Chugs, on your engagement. Well, Chugs is actually filming in another studio, but I promise you this, I will pass along the information, and yes, 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 for those that do not know, Jeremy Chugs, hit him up on Instagram and Twitter at Jeremy underscore Chugs. Tell him congrats because after five years of dating, his girlfriend finally proposed to him. No, I'm kidding. He proposed. She said yes. It's all good. And I'm, I'm happy for Jeremy, and I'm happy for D-Rose as well.